as I said before the elections, we would transfer Australia's embassy to China from Taipei to Peking. We did so. We did so in, within a couple of weeks. It was easier for Australia to do it than it was, or is, for the Philippines. But nevertheless, uh, it is, uh, I'm uh, not making uh, a statement uh, concerning the internal politics of any country. I am merely acknowledging historic inevitability. Every country in this region will acknowledge that the government in Peking is the government of China and the government in Taipei is not the government of China. All too soon, the brief visit drew to a close. Once again, there were full honours at the Manila International Airport for President and Mrs Marcos and for the departing guests. Concluding his Six Nations swing through Southeast Asia, Mr Whitlam was leaving behind a new image of Australia as the enlightened brother, a helper and a partner in the region's development. To President Marcos, he had promised negotiations to update the Philippines-Australia trade agreement, Australian aid for infrastructure and agricultural development in the southern island of Mindanao, and increased Australian investments in local mining and processing industries. He also promised a cultural pact to develop closer relations between Australians and Filipinos, and the increased migration of Filipino skilled workers to help meet Australia's manpower needs. President Marcos told newsmen later, We really enjoyed this particular visit of a head of government. The advance notices to the effect that the Prime Minister was somehow above the level of controversies and interests of the Asian countries have been disproved. He is very knowledgeable about Asian problems. While in Manila, Mr Whitlam also endorsed the idea first proposed by the Philippine President of an Asian forum, which may be called opportunely, conveniently and expediently at any time where there is a need to bring the nations of the region together on a pressing common problem. In a speech to keynote his Asian tour, the Prime Minister had said, our genuine concern about the well-being of our neighbours in the region is a central preoccupation and an enduring feature of Australian foreign policy. Our main endeavours will henceforth be directed towards expanding relations in those areas of foreign affairs which are most likely to produce lasting social and economic advantages for both us and our neighbours. Nothing could have been more reassuring to Asians who were previously wary of their white brothers down south, a wariness that Gough Whitlam's government has done much to allay.